Thank you for the invitation to give uh, this uh, keynote speech about um, shared on-demand automated vehicles, particularly for the first and last mile connection to transit, to public transport. So I will give um, a short presentation about some of the things that we have been doing research about at UDelft, Delft, Department of Transport and Planning, which is where I'm an associate professor um, in the Netherlands. So this is the Faculty of Civil Engineering at the TU Delft. And this is where we do uh, research about all kinds of aspects on uh, transportation, traffic, active modes, uh, traffic safety, uh, emerging technologies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'm leading this lab, which is called the HEAT Lab that does research on electric and automated transport. Um, that's where we are concentrating most of our efforts on uh, these two technologies, which of course make sense that they come together. So we don't envision a future with automated driving without electrification. And most likely also electrification without automated driving, although we know that electrification is happening faster. So, um, Still the problem that we have um, in cities around the world, although we know that with COVID-19, it has uh, re decreased a bit, um, is traffic congestion. Is this exaggerated demand for the usage of private cars uh, for the capacity that you have? And you can increase the capacity of the road network, but this is only going to uh, continue um, maintaining this problem of an exaggerated use of private cars with all the consequences that it has on energy spending, on uh, travel time, uh, which of course cannot be used in a most productive way. And also the space that all this infrastructure occupies, the, the roads and the parking. So we have been thinking about solutions for this. It cannot be said that we have been very successful, but indeed, um, there is a, a trend of adopting technologies, policies that are able to reduce the impact of this problem. And in, in a nutshell, very summarized, we have in technology several things happening. Um, electric mobility, automation, but also information technology that is allowing things like, for example, mobility as a service to happen in cities. Then in public transport operation, we have more and more pressure to spend less money, but to serve more people. And there are some societal changes like population aging, um, behavior of the millennials. Some actually don't want to own a car, they don't want to spend the money, and also the shared economy. And this is leading to uh, several innovations in the mobility market. Um, car sharing, uh, ride hailing like Uber, um, traditional public transport, transitioning to more on-demand transport, uh, vehicle automation being used today um, as first and last mile, as, as a first uh, opportunity for vehicle automation. What we're seeing a lot is connections, first and last mile. And also, as I mentioned, mobility as a service, which means putting all public transport and all shared mobility in the same platform that clients can use. So what is this vehicle automation? This table has been seen by many people. You know, you have from zero no automation to very high uh, automation levels. I'm only going to focus on uh, full automation, on very high automation. So you're talking about the vehicle that can drive itself, right? So you don't even need a driving wheel inside the car. And let's look at um, two um, main ways of using um, this technology used as public transport or substitution of private conventional vehicles. Uh, but I'm going to focus mostly as public transport in this presentation, that's going to be the focus. In terms of when is uh, full uh, or when are full automated vehicles going to be available? Well, this is of course the million dollar question because nobody knows exactly. Uh, we do have some research about that, designing different scenarios. And we see that it can vary a lot. It depends a lot on 
Um, shared mobility adoption depends on the maturity of the technology, events like, of course, uh, accidents, for example. Uh, this is just one, one um, depiction of the market penetration of automated vehicles according to one scenario, which is actually um, a more optimistic scenario, okay? Because you see here that level five automation is already present, 2020, 2025, and uh, this is probably a bit too early. So things are not happening as fast as you could uh, imagine. And this has a lot to do, of course, with the maturity of the technology. So one thing that is important is to uh, understand how vehicle automation is going to be used and what impacts can we expect. And why not ask uh, to the people who are managing mobility, what do they expect uh, vehicle automation um, to represent in their cities? What can this technology solve uh, in terms of the problems that they are facing today? And if you ask cities, um, what do they want from autonomous vehicles, from automated vehicles? First thing that they say, last mile transit. So this final connection to uh, public transport networks, because they have invested a lot in rail, uh, invested in trams, even in, in high performance um, bus systems. And last thing would be uh, private uh, automation. They don't really foresee that this is important for solving their problems, the problems that they face in the cities. So um, that's one of the perspectives that we explore in our lab, in the heat lab. Uh, so what we're talking about is indeed this uh, first mile connection to train stations, last mile connection to your workplace, if you're talking about a commuter trip in the morning. So you may have a fantastic system, rail system here with high capacity, but the problem is that you cannot reach every point of your territory with this type of uh, capacity. So you always need first and last mile. And this is what we uh, try to cover. What are the options in the Netherlands? You can have you know, traditional car sharing, you do have bike sharing, public transport and, and ride hailing with uh, uh, Uber. Although all of these solutions have their disadvantages. Car sharing is expensive. These buses ride empty off peak. Uh, Uber systems are also expensive. The bicycle is quite nice and it's quite used a lot um, in uh, um, the Netherlands, but it does have limited range. Okay, And of course that you are subject to the weather conditions. Um, so we use several case studies to, to, to understand the impact of vehicle automation in first and last mile. One of those case studies is for sure here next to our campus, we have a train station, which is not used a lot, but if it has some usage, it's for sure um, the students and the teachers of TU Delft because it's quite close, but still not close enough that you can just walk. If you want to access some of the faculties, it's already a bit far, like two, three kilometers. So we explore this case study here. So this is the location of the station, which is now being upgraded. And here you have the campus of the University of uh, Tew Delft. So basically people have to do this route that you see here. And these are depictions of how the future station is going to look like um, and uh, public works are ongoing now. So the, our idea was that we can use small electric automated vehicles like for example, a Renault Twizy, uh, even using the bicycle lanes. And we did some simulations to understand what's going to be the, the impact of um, such a system. Um, we do this kind of agent-based simulation where you know we study fleet sizing, pickup and drop off, charging of the vehicles. That's the objective. Here on the bottom, what you see is a more micro uh, simulation where then you can study the performance of the driving of the vehicle uh, with you know next to the bicycles, understanding the conflicts. But in this type of model here above, you cannot. Uh, capture this type of uh, detail, otherwise it would take too much time. So we are going to focus on this type of simulation and see what kind of results we can get. And this is basically um, a comparison between a base scenario, running the system normally, so to speak, and then what you see uh, here 
is basically the results or several key performance indicators if you uh, add proactive vehicle relocations. With automated vehicles, it's easier to send a vehicle somewhere uh, in your city because you don't have drivers, right? So it's going to be much cheap compared with the car sharing that you have today. With car sharing that you have today, um, you always need to send a driver. In this case, you don't need because the vehicle is automated. And what you can see is interesting is that you can actually decrease a lot in relation to a base scenario, decrease a lot the average waiting time. You also um, have you know, the first moment in which you need to charge a vehicle basically happens sooner. That's because you are also spending more power. So this makes sense. Um, and you can understand how several of these attributes that vehicle automation can bring to the operation of public transport systems can be so um, uh, helpful. In this case, we are studying, as I said, the first and last mile connection to the train station. And we can make this system quite uh, more efficient uh, with the same number of cars. You can actually serve uh, more people uh, than if you had to have drivers. We also do some optimization studies and we try to understand what would be the operational area around the station here. And uh, of course you could say, well, my operation area could be whatever, um, as long as a client wants to travel somewhere. Well, that's not so much. So why? Because uh, if I allow a traveler to go very far, it's very unlikely that I'm going to have a person to return to the same station. So this means that you are going to lose a lot of energy, a lot of money. Um, so there's going to be a balance. There's going to be a trade-off where you can find the optimal design of the catchment area of this uh, train station. And we did, did, we did do uh, several um, uh, studies with, with different parameters. I mean, sensitivity analysis. Uh, this is the total number of requests for a, a short period of time on the peak hour. And then we can vary the fleet size. As you see, five, just having five vehicles or uh, 10 vehicles. And uh, uh, what do you see here? We also have, by the way, electric taxis and conventional ones. With a smaller number of taxis, if they are electric, you actually serve fewer areas. Why? Because these vehicles need to charge, okay? And then you lose performance. If you have more uh, taxis, then it's not so much a problem, okay? Because you have enough vehicles. Of course, that then the efficiency is not the same per vehicle. You don't get so much money. So you can see, for example, that if you go from five to 10 vehicles, this is the double, you only go from 552 euros per day um, of profit to 518. So it's a very small increase with such a big number of vehicles compared with the base scenario. This is also interesting to uh, capture. We also look at uh, the design of the future um, train station with so many shared vehicles. If you start imagining that you have a lot of uh, shared vehicles, then you'll see that you need space. The stations are not going to look like probably um, like they look today. So you need parking space. You need areas where vehicles are waiting for passengers uh, to pick them up. So this is what you see here. In this simulation, this is half past seven. You see vehicles, most of the vehicles are uh, parked in some external parking lots. And then at uh, almost half past eight, you have a lot of buzz, a lot of movement here next to the train station. Why? Because it's uh, the peak hour. This is where um, people need to be picked up to go to Tudelft and other areas around. So this is uh, the catchment area that results from that optimization study that I showed uh, before. We also have other studies. Um, this is for the city of, uh, of Rotterdam. Uh, which is actually quite close to Delft, but it's, it's a very big city. It has this famous uh, port. And in this case, it's also a study on first and last mile connection to, to two main train slash metro stations. This is a metro station. This is a train station, but it's also uh, metro. Um, this uh, uh, connection, the connection to these two main facilities can also be done with automated vehicles, right, in theory. Uh, what happens today is that you have some trams, you have some buses, uh, you can also use the bicycle. But we also wanted to um, study this more urban environment. 
And uh, um, we set up the same type of simulation, uh, uh, an agent-based simulation. We also have collected uh, all the demand for um, uh, this system. So we are capturing the origins and destinations in the city that have to use these two uh, rail stations. And then the first and last mile connection is being done with uh, automated vehicles. And uh, um, our objective here was, well, traditional stuff, understanding how many vehicles, what is the performance of the system, but we were more concerned about the financial viability. We wanted to study the financial viability of uh, these uh, systems. And first thing that we needed to do was to understand what was the fleet size that you required for a very high level of service. So we wanted to depart from this reference point. Very high level of service. How many vehicles do you need? And we did some testing and we understood that we needed 280 vehicles to satisfy the demand for first and last mile connection to those two uh, rail stations. And now with this uh, number uh, of vehicles, then we basically studied what is the financial uh, breakout of the different components of uh, such a company if you were supplying this connection, first and last mile connection. And what you see here is depreciation, depreciation costs of the vehicles, uh, which is quite high. Then you have the maintenance costs of the vehicles, but you also have, for example, the wage expenses, not really with drivers. No, you don't have these with drivers, but you do uh, have to pay some of the employees of your company. You have employees in your company, right? So uh, you always have some employees. Um, and what we saw was that actually with the revenue that you obtain, which is basically we use the price that Uber is charging in the Netherlands, you could get a very significant chunk of uh, profit, like 20%. And then if you compare this with um, a system where taxes are driven by humans, imagine your classic taxes in the city, satisfying first and last mile connections, then, of course, that uh, you have zero profit. You actually have minus a uh, few thousands uh, of euros. Why? Because you need to pay for the salaries of those drivers. And this can be quite expensive, even if you use the minimum wage uh, in the Netherlands. Okay? So this shows you that vehicle automation can actually open uh, business possibilities and, and viable transportation systems that are not possible today. And this was quite important uh, for us to uh, conclude. We also uh, study, um, let's say, full trips by automated vehicles, okay, from origin to uh, destination. So we are not talking about just first and last mile. So these were our first experiments when we were studying shared taxes a few years ago, using also agent-based simulation and seeing how taxis could actually share their space. Instead of just picking up one client, they could have more clients in the same taxi, which today is known as a, a Uber pool kind of system, right? And uh, we could do some tests and understand that the average waiting time um, for shared uh, taxis clients would be actually lower than for the clients of the single uh, client taxis, okay? So this is also an interesting result to see how you can use the efficiency of the vehicles and provide uh, a better level of service to, to the clients. These are later experiments. Now, uh, this is with the, with the city uh, of The Hague where we also look at um, connections between the different areas uh, of the city. Again, um, full trip, origin to destination without using any public transport, without using private cars, so shared um, cars. Uh, this is the architecture of the system. You have to see that you may even have more than one fleet operator, then there must be a central traffic operator, etc. So we are doing this research and um, one of the things that uh, is important to conclude is that actually we don't have strong conclusions yet 
about what's going to be the future role of uh, automated vehicles. Okay, it depends on a lot of things. So there's plenty of research questions still. Uh, for example, how can shared on-demand transport, automated or not, be used for complementing public transport? Okay, we do have some studies on first and last mile, but there must be um, other research questions, like for example, substituting fully uh, some public transport, because not all public transport is efficient, right? So there must be thresholds where actually uh, this on-demand automated uh, transport can actually substitute instead of serving public transport. But at the same time, we do know that uh, automated vehicles could play this essential role of first and last month. So where are these thresholds, these, these, these points, these sweet spots where uh, you would have um, the transition from one system to uh, the other? Uh, what is the demand for door-to-door -door shared transport with uh, these uh, uh, vehicles like Uber systems with uh, automated vehicles? What are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of such, a, of such systems? Uh, the question is, will it bring back cars to city centers? And this is something that we want. We have to ask this. Um, is mobility as a service that concept of having an app where I can get all my uh, public transport, including shared mobility, all about ride hailing services. So a lot of people associate mass with Uber, okay? Um, I do think that the essential component is still a public transport um, component, okay? So it should be implemented for improving uh, access to uh, public transport and decrease the usage of private uh, cars. What is the effect of shared electric mobility on the overall sustainability of uh, urban systems? Yeah, so can batteries be used to shape the peaks of demand for power, for example? So um, there's more research now in connecting these two worlds. You're talking about um, mobility, public transport, shared mobility, automation with the power with the power networks, the grid, because this is going to be very tricky to manage as we drain more and more power from the network because we need that power now for mobility. Um, how can you manage this demand? And maybe you can even use this uh, demand to shave the problem of the peaks where you have uh, a peak of uh, power needs and then you have an off peak period. This is actually not good for the power production because you don't want to be starting and uh, stopping the energy generation. So this is a very, very hot topic that we are also exploring at uh, TU Delft. And that's it. This was uh, my presentation. We do have more research going on, but uh, I decided not to uh, stack the presentation with um, different research projects. Um, if you are interested in discussing this, I'm available to discuss. And uh, if you also want to send me an email, please feel free to uh, do so to this email, g.correa at tudelft.nl. Thanks for your attention.